welcome everybody into this is a shoot and boy <laughs> i got some shooting going on right now i know i'm behind i know i'm a little i'm a little late i had a busy week this week with work and things going on because believe it or not i haven't quit my day job yet doing these videos but as always if you like the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and leave some comments down below based on what i'm talking about i just now got the aew i'm watching it from past wednesday and you know, I didn't see very much stuff going on, on social media. Usually I see some things going on, on social media because I work on an afternoon shift, so I don't get off till late. So that's why I watch these videos like after the next day or whenever I can get to them. And <laughs> you know, I've been looking forward to AEW all week long. And now I know why that I didn't see nothing really going on with the AEW social media thing app or anything going on on social media at all. The, you open up the show in a cage match and nobody in the flipping right mind is going to look at what Jake Hager has been doing in his MMA career. Yes, he's only had one or two matches. Yes, he's undefeated in the matches, but he has the technique. He has the training. No one in the flipping right mind is going to think, that Warlow is going to be able to compete in that type of match for as long as they did. And the fact that they was not even having any blood. AEW is not WWE. It makes sense that WWE would have a match like that and show no blood. Matter of fact, they did with uh, Timothy Thatcher and, and Ciampa. It makes sense because they don't like having the juice. They don't like having the blood show up on now. But I watched this exhibition with this gimmick match and that's AEW stick I, i'm starting to figure out AEW is popular and what works for them and it works for them i'm not being negative about it is the gimmick matches they do a lot of gimmick matches which is great because you know what there's nothing wrong with that especially when it's successful you put the match on now and, and <laughs> what an insult to mma I'm just going to say it right now. Oh, well, sh shoot, this is a, uh, uh, it's entertainment. I understand that it's entertainment. Oh, well, you, you know, Warlow, they got to make him look strong too. And I understand they got to make Warlow look strong. I'm not, I'm not a critical wrestling fan. I can usually accept things and I, I powered through it. It got to the end, and of course, it broke down in an all-out brawl for no reason whatsoever did it need to go the direction in which it did. It, you know, you can build this storyline. This rivalry is already built. You don't need to have constant chaos between these teams. You can have Jake Hager get the upper hand and get the victory, but you didn't need the chaos to break out to start the show like it did. And it's just, it's none of the performers' fault. It's the writing team in the back. That all being said, we move on, and I believe the next match of the night, and it was, actually, yes, it was, because I didn't finish the show, because I couldn't finish the show. I'm going to finish it, but I need a break, and I needed to make a video about it. So your next match is Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. It's a handicap match against Dorby Allen. I want to say right now that they made the right call with having Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky go over on Darby Allen. I was beginning to get worried, and I'm going to nitpick this, and I don't even think it's nitpicking. It's just driving me up the wall. How on God's green earth is Rick Knox, which is the referee, how does he still have a job? That dude flipping sucks. He don't imply the rules. I've watched him in his tag team matches, in which he usually does, and I'm starting to see why he does a lot of tag team matches and not so much single matches, because the teams know, oh, if we get Rick Knox as the referee, we can do whatever we want. There's not going to be any rules applied. He's not going to count us. He's not going to apply a count. He's not going to disqualify us for both of us being in the ring. If you don't believe me, go check out Double or Nothing in the match with... Uh, uh, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus the Young Bucks. And you tell me that he follows the rules and he's not as bad as I'm saying. The dude 
shouldn't even have a refereeing license, shouldn't be employed by anybody on a network TV show. These are simple, listen, and I understand. I understand that AEW wants to break out and have their own style. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let me say that again. There's nothing wrong with having your own style. But when it comes to tag team matches, there are certain guidelines, certain rules in which you follow. Well, that wasn't a tag team match. It was a handicap match. Well, guess what? The handicap team, the team that has the two, still has to abide by tag team rules. Now, I know how the story goes. Most of the time, they don't. But at one time, or more than once, they both of these guys were in the ring doing things that they shouldn't have been doing for as long as they was doing them. And Ren Knox is standing there in the corner like, come on, guys. Come on. Hey. Hey, come on. Get out. Come on. Get out. You imply the rules. I'm sorry. There's certain things that you do not do and you rules that you do not break. AEW makes it a consistent habit, especially in Young Buck matches, that the rules don't apply. It might as well be a tornado tag team match all the time, especially, like I said, when the Young Bucks are in there. Why are we not enforcing the rules? This, this program, this, this promotion has been out for two and a half years now. And you tell me. And the, and the thing is, they don't, and the reason is, it's my biggest gripe. It's my biggest gripe about it. I just watched a tag team match, right? I, I'm sorry, I, I, I finished up the rule. Brock Anderson and Cody Rhodes was in now. And the rules were being followed. Way better. The consistency on the rules is what the problem is. AEW can't seem to get out of their own way. They have entertaining matches. They do gimmick matches, usually correct to an extent. Camera angles have shot him in the past with blood and guts. The explosion's not working at the Boy Boy of Death match. Exploding Boy Boy of Death match. That stuff happens. The camera angles was not the competitor's fault. But when they're setting up these matches, you didn't even tell me that you ain't going to follow the flipping rules that has worked not just in WWE. It worked when WCW was big. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a lot of things that NWO was doing that you see happen on AEW when WCW, there's a tongue twister for you, sort of going downhill where they just didn't abide by any of the rules. What makes a heel tag team when they break the rules, but they're sneaky about it, or they do it to get disqualified? And then I watch a match with Orange Cassidy against the, the pretty people. I, I don't even see them because they're on Dork, and I don't have time to sit down and watch Dork. Uh, 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 I don't know the guy's name. Big, tall Brazilian guy. I, I, I It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh... But the, the outside interference was nonstop from both teams. The best friends and the pretty people or the pretty club, whatever they're calling themselves. Yeah, maybe I should remember, but I don't see him because they're on dork. I know Peter Avalon's in the group. Benozo, ben, ben, ben I think that guy is the guy's name, the big, tall Brazilian guy. The man has potential. The match wasn't bad except for the outside interference that nobody was getting disqualified on. There was rolling Orange Cassidy in the ring right in front of the referee. They sprayed Orange Cassidy in the eyes with hairspray or tan, spray tan, right in front of the referee. And you know how I know it was bad? Because Jim Ross, who, by the way, Jim Ross went off on Rick Knox and his referee, and he does it every time Rick Knox referees. So it's not just me. As a matter of fact, if you listen to Busted Open, Bully Ray has broken down his tag team style matches on AEW more than one occasion. Let me guess, let me see Tony Khan get on Busted Open when Bully Ray's on. So far, I've not seen it. 
Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I missed the episode where he was on. But Tony Khan, who's on every week, it's kind of funny. This week, AEW's on, on Wednesday, and Bully Ray was on Busted Open, and Tony Khan didn't get on the show. They need to get a grip on the referee. That's the whole point about this. That's what made me, that was set me over the edge was the referee. The cage match, some people probably enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it. But I understand the, pu the the purpose of it. But I think there's a better way of doing it. And a better way of handling it. You cannot consistently. Be inconsistent. And be successful. Look what happened in WCW. And the fact that these guys. Are not following the rules. Are not learning the art. When you got the guy, the likes of Mark Henry, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, which Tony Schiavone is way more forgiving on the rules than Jim Ross is, Paul Wright, Christian Cage, Matt Hardy, John Moxley, who he is just as guilty at breaking rules sometimes as anybody else, just in Taz, just to name a few veterans that's in the business. In the company, and you're telling me that these young guys, that the, that the older guys are looking at this and going, that's okay? I know it's not okay because Mark Henry has been busted open before talking about how AEW's got some tweaking they got to do to fix things. Not saying, and let me, let me make this very clear as I wind down this video. I do enjoy AEW. Okay? I do not, however, enjoy AEW when it's a chaotic mess because we don't want to follow the rules and we don't want to be consistent. It's the consistency is key. If you're not going to abide by the normal tag team rules, then don't, but be consistent about it, but make it make sense. Don't have a tag team match and then two matches later have another tag team match that are completely different on the rule standpoint. And a big part of it is Rick Knox is, like I said, is usually a part of the tag team matches that don't abide by the rules. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm interested. I really want to see what's going to be discussed here. I'm on one tonight. Goodbye. Have a great rest of your weekend. And I'll see you guys later.